السلام علیکم دس از لیکچر تھرٹی تھری آف ایڈوانس کاسٹ اینڈ مینجمنٹ اکاؤنٹنگ دا ٹاپک دیٹ وی آر ڈسکسنگ ہیز بین اسٹریٹیجک مینجمنٹ اکاؤنٹنگ اسٹریٹیجک از اے کانسیپٹ وی ڈسکسڈ اینڈ وی ایکسپلین دیٹ اسٹریٹجی از سم تھنگ دیٹ ریلیٹس ٹو اے لانگر پیریڈ سو دا ٹائم ہورائزن is longer and it covers various aspects almost all the aspects at least all the core and important aspects of the business and the organization so strategic management accounting will imply that we have to measure performance over this longer time period and covering this wider perspective and including most aspects of the organization performance measurement implies that we are going to somehow measure how we are doing what is the result of the activities what is the achievement of the organization how do we measure that we have said earlier traditionally measurement and performance measurement was something that was focused on finances so finance was the key probably the core critical performance measure of business and by use of some uh, performance criteria such as profits and sales revenues uh, the performance was being measured and that was the main focus that we are going to measure the performance of business by looking at the financial results this has been the case traditionally uh, but it has its limitations and more and more uh, it has been felt that basically we are trying to measure the performance of the company in relation to the objectives that it sets itself this is how the strategic management comes in that the objectives can be longer term and they can cover various aspects of the organization so in order to measure the performance of the organization we should measure how objectives in the various different aspects have been achieved and this is not related to finance only we are going to incorporate and include in it non financial measures one such technique of measuring the performance of finance and non financial measures was what we discussed as the balanced scorecard we have said the balanced scorecard is now going to look at different perspectives of the organization and the idea is that we should match the objectives that have been set in order to achieve the overall mission and vision of the organization and we should measure the performance of each objective in each different area or perspective the balanced scorecard has shown that four major perspectives can be looked at and the four were the finance perspective of course is an essential and important perspective all businesses in order to sustain must have a financial perspective a positive outlook uh, in financial terms must have profitability in order to sustain and grow and reward the stakeholders so one was the finance perspective another perspective included in the balanced scorecard was the customer perspective that we should also look at how customers see us and customers import represent an important part of the business because they are the people who are buying the products and therefore bringing revenue to the organization and in a way ensuring its continuation and sustainability so customer perspective should also be looked at and then the internal process perspective should be looked at 
what are the processes that we are doing what are the things that we are good at what is the core operation what is the core business how it is being done and how we can excel in doing our processes whatever is the activity of the business whether it is a workshop whether it is a bakery whether it is a large manufacturing plant or all of them incorporate certain processes in order to arrive at the final product so those processes are the internal processes and the organization needs to identify itself that these are the processes that we are going to focus on and we are going to excel in because the processes is what leads to the quality of production so internal process perspective should be uh, measured the objectives should be set and the measurement should be done and performance should be checked how we are doing in terms of improving and excelling the internal uh, process perspective and the fourth perspective which the balance scorecard uh, we discussed has covered is the learning and growth perspective very uh, often businesses see that if they try to pace themselves in growth terms at a horizontal level that we have reached this level of growth and now we will stay here and continue in existence like this and we'll go on produce the same amount and have the same kind of revenue and have the same kind of profitability this kind of existence is very hard now very soon you either add growth in your business add profitability and growth and uh, expansion or very often the business will tilt downward if there is no growth then there is a downward trend so in order to prevent the downward trend businesses must always look at a growth and a learning perspective the environment is becoming increasingly competitive increasingly tougher various costs are rising so businesses face bigger challenges in order to maintain profitability and also to maintain growth but this is the state of the current economic environment so businesses have to bring in a learning and growth perspective they must always be looking at their business and their uh, organization in a way that they can grow and expand so these are the four perspectives that were uh, discussed under the balance scorecard uh, theory and the balance scorecard therefore is an attempt to try to measure the performance in various different aspects of the organization not just the financial aspect we also discussed one example we are going to illustrate this and look at the example again and we are going to look at the example in detail of what a balance scorecard would look like and what are the different objectives that can be set for the various different perspectives we have discussed what are the objectives how to measure them and what kind of targets can be set and what kind of initiatives can be taken in the different perspectives so we are going to look at this example southwest airlines balance scorecard analysis strategic theme operating efficiency so this is the example of an airline and the airline operations are now going to uh, set themselves uh, based on the balance scorecard what are the objectives and what are the different performance measures they said their theme is operating efficiency operating efficiency is a, a fairly common uh, phenomena and theme this means that whatever operations you are doing whatever activities the business is doing in the in the case of the airline they are flying planes uh, taking passengers and then coming back and so this is their operation their operation is flight operations they are in the business of uh, acquiring aircraft and then offering the seats to the public and uh, 
traveling, arranging the travel from one destination to another, to another. So this is the operation which they want to make efficient. Let's look at their perspectives. For the financial perspective, the question they are asking is, what will drive operating efficiency? This means, how will we get more operating efficiency? What are the factors that will increase the efficiency of the operations? And they have answered that by saying, more customers on fewer planes. So the first perspective they take is the financial perspective. And in that perspective, they say that we want to have greater operating efficiency. And how will we get that? Their answer is that there should be more customers on fewer planes. More customers on fewer planes means that the number of customers are going up. So therefore, the revenue is increasing. And fewer planes, lesser planes, the airplanes, the number of airplanes is decreased and coming down. So the cost of the planes and running and maintaining, maintaining the aircraft, this is coming down. And the number of passengers are increasing. And this is going to give you the financial perspective and it will imply that you have greater operating efficiency and therefore you have greater profitability and therefore you have greater financial uh, uh, perspective as a greater uh, measure and profitability and revenue and therefore your objectives, the financial objectives are being properly met. This was the perspective uh, they chose in the financial aspect. Let's look at the next one. Customer. How will we get more customers on fewer planes? Answer. Attract segment of customers who value price and on-time arrivals. Now, when they look at their customer perspective, the objectives which they are going to set for themselves is how are we going to get more customers? Because on the financial aspect, we said that more customers and lesser planes. So, from the customer perspective, how will we get more customers? And that they have answered by saying that we are going to attract particular segments, target particular segments, and they identify which segment they want to target. They want to target those segments where customers value price. Value price, it means that price is important to those customers. And so the lower the price, the more customers they are likely to attract. So they are going to attract that segment which values price. In other words, they want to have a lower price of the ticket. And secondly, they also want those customers in addition who want on-time arrival. It's important when you're traveling and all the arrangements that you make, you have scheduled times of uh, flying times and aircraft times, departure and landing and so forth. So a lot of planning of the visit and if you have other engagements to make, you align with according to the time of the schedule. So this airline is setting itself the target that we want to attract those customers who will value the on-time arrival. So they are going to avoid late departures, late arrivals, delays in flight. This is the customer perspective they take. So you want to give them a low price for the ticket and you want to ensure that they are going to arrive on time. Let's look at the next perspective, internal. The next perspective is the internal process perspective. What must our internal focus B? The answer is fast aircraft turnaround time. The internal process for the airline is that it is flying aircraft from one destination to another and then coming back. So this is the turnaround time. Going to one destination and then offloading passengers, taking on more passengers, new passengers and coming back. Turnaround time. Now, their internal objective 
has identified that turnaround time is something which they must excel in, which they must try to minimize. So their objective for um, internal process excellence is for the aircraft turnaround time to be fast. They need to have a fast turnaround time. If they have fast turnaround time, they feel that the customer objectives will be met and the financial objectives will be met. The customer is likely to arrive on time and then that is going to create the value and the financial perspective which they are trying to uh, uh, achieve and attract that kind of customer. So for the internal process, they are going to, uh, their objective is the turnaround time, going and coming. This is a bit similar to, as we had mentioned in our production uh, discussion, the cycle time. This is like, turnaround time is like the same as the cycle time when you start the process and you continue, achieve it, and then when, by the time you end the product. So that is a cycle time. So they want to minimize, in other words, have a fast turnaround time, and that is their uh, internal perspective objective. And let's look at the last learning objective. Learning, how will our people accomplish fast turnaround time? Answer, educate and compensate ground crew. Use employer stockholder program. So we have said, that learning is an important aspect of business operation, learning and growth. And generally, the view is there is not enough attention and focus given to this aspect in the organization, the learning and growth. If we are going to set objectives for the process, that we have a fast turnaround time. The flights are organized, they go and they come back. How will they achieve that? The answer they said is that they have to, first of all, train their staff. The staff must be trained in what procedures are required. And if they are trained and efficient, only then can they accomplish the processes in time. So here, time is of the essence, the key, that they want everything done in proper time. So their staff must be trained to know what requires to be done. So, training and motivating the employees. And motivating means that they also have to work uh, efficiently and they should be interested in improvements in achieving the uh, objectives and targets. And one thing they mentioned here is the use of employee stockholder program. This has worked quite successfully in many companies all over the world. The employee stockholder program is that you offer the employees shares in the company at an advantageous price. And you offer them first in the shape of options. And if they want, the price has gone up, then they can buy those shares at the advantageous price. So they have the option to buy the shares if the price goes up. Therefore, it is their incentive to work efficiently, ensure profitability of the organization, to ensure that the price goes up, and if the price goes up, then they can buy those shares and take the advantage. They will have the advantage. So, the employee stockholder program is an important uh, aspect for motivating the employees. So, we had all the four aspects discussed, we discussed the questions, how to achieve and what is it that is going to drive and then how to set the objectives. In a way, they have set themselves the objectives in all uh, four uh, perspectives. We are now going to, in the next slide, see exactly what are the objectives and how they are going to be measured. This slide is showing the balance scorecard as it might look. On the left-hand side, you have all the four perspectives, the financial, customer, internal, and learning. In front of each perspective, you have the objectives that have been stated. So, in the financial perspective, the objective is profitability, more customers, and fewer planes. These are the objectives. How are you going to 
measure the accomplishment of these objectives, they have given how they should be measured. So profitability will be measured by market value of the company or market value of the shares. The number of customers can be measured by seat revenue. Seat revenue, sales revenue, the number of tickets that have been sold. So more tickets that have been sold, greater will be the revenue. And fewer planes can be measured by the plane's lease cost. The cost of leasing the planes. When you take planes on lease, what is the cost? How that is increasing when the customers are increasing. In front of that, they have set the targets for each of this measurement criteria. So, where they want to look at profitability as an objective, they are going to measure that with market value and they have set the target as 30% of Kager. Kager is compounded annual growth rate. This is something, how it is calculated, you will cover that in your financial management courses. So the way, the target that is going to be set for the market value profitability perspective is 30% of compounded growth rate. The customers is going to be measured by seat revenue. The target set for seat revenue is 20% growth rate. So seat revenue should grow compounded annually at 20%. That is the target which they have set. So seats and revenues will grow at 20%. Planes are going to be fewer. Fewer planes means that the planes lease cost is the measure and they have set a target that this should increase at 5%. So when the cost is going to increase by 5% and revenue is going to grow by 20%, then this is going to uh, give rise to greater profitability and a higher market value. This is the financial perspective. And then on the customer perspective, they have given the objective that flight is on time. So for on time flight, this is the objective. How will that be measured? That will be measured by on time arrival rating. And their target here is to be number one and they are going to have some initiatives and that is quality management is going to be an initiative. Second objective, lowest price. And the way to measure the lowest price is by market surveys. Target is to be number one. That means the target, they want to be the lowest price airline in the market. And the initiatives they are taking is a customer loyalty program. So for the customer perspective, they have set themselves two objectives. One is that the flight should be on time. And the second is that they want to be the lowest price uh, uh, airline. So the way in which they are going to measure whether they are the on time flights or not, the flights are on time, here uh, their target is to be number one in the ratings of flight time arrivals. So ratings are being done uh, internationally by international agencies and other organizations that are going to keep records of all the flights of all the airlines and they have different ratings. And so they are targeting that we should be number one in the rating for arriving on time. For the low price, how are they going to measure that the price they have is low. The target they want to set is they want to be number one. This means that they should be the lowest price airline that is operating. How to measure that? Are they the lowest or not? And for this, they have set the management criteria as a market survey. So airlines will conduct market surveys. Their people will be out uh, at the airports uh, questioning uh, customers and also out in the markets where people are buying. So they are trying to then question the customers and to obtain the prices that they are uh, being offered. And the customer surveys will show what is the lowest price that is being, um, being offered by the different airlines. So market surveys is going to show whether they are the lowest or not, or if there are other people who are other airlines offering 
uh, flights at a lower price. So they want to be number one. This means they want to be the lowest price operator in that market. And the initiative they are going to do is a customer loyalty program. Customer loyalty program is uh, different programs which airlines and others do in order to ensure that the customers stay with that airline and they repeatedly use the same airline. One example of this is the air miles. The more miles you have to your credit, then you start to get more discount on your uh, travel tickets. So this is a customer loyalty program. So this was the customer perspective for this airline. Let's look at the process, the internal process. Internal, the objective here is fast ground turnaround. They want to have a fast ground turnaround time. Measurement will be on ground time. How long do they take on the ground? Target is 30 minutes. And the next objective and the next measurement will be on time departure. So two measurements, one on ground time and secondly on time departure. They want the target that they should be on ground for 30 minutes and the target should be 90% of the time they should be on time. The initiative is cycle time optimization, trying to get the best cycle time. Internal process, the way they want to excel in internal process is to have fast turnaround time. For fast turnaround, they have set two measures how they are going to measure fast turnaround. And the two measures are how long they will take on the ground, and secondly, whether they are departing on time. So on time departures and the time taken on ground. And they have set targets that they should have on ground time should be 30 minutes. That means the aircraft departs, lands at the destination, the passengers disembark and new passengers come on board and the aircraft takes off again. Uh, when within 30 minutes. So this is the target they have set. On ground time should be 30 minutes. And their departure should be on time. And the target for that they have set as 90%. So 90% of their flights should be departing on time. That's the target. And the initiative here is to optimize cycle time. This entire process is the cycle time process, as we said. The Turnaround time is related entirely to the cycle time process. So the time it takes to start the operations and to get the flight going and for the flight to land on the destination and then come back. This is cycle time. They want to optimize the cycle time. This is the process they have identified. and they have. So this is an example of the internal process. This is their own operations. They have to make their own operations uh, efficient and they have to make their own operations excellent. Timing on one hand and the stoppage time. So this is how they set the criteria and they have the internal perspective uh, on performance measurement. And let's look at the learning objective. Learning, the objective here is ground crew alignment. The measurement is percentage ground crew trained and percentage ground crew stockholders. This is the measurement. The target is for year one to be 70%, year three 90%, year five 100%. Initiative that they have taken is the ESOP and ground crew training. So for the learning perspective, their objective is that ground crew should be aligned to their objectives. They have set targets, the 30 minutes, the on time, all that can be done by having, by having the ground crew aligned with these objectives. They should understand these and they should work towards achieving and accomplishing this. The way they will measure, first, what percentage of ground crew are trained and secondly, what percentage of ground crew have become stockholders. So these are the two measured that they have set. And they have set targets that year one, 70% should be uh, achieved, year two, 90%, and year, year three, and year five, 
So over five years, they want that their entire workforce should be trained as well as they should become stockholders. Stockholders, as we discussed, is the, is, is the plan where they buy shares. The initiative, we said, is the ESOP. The ESOP stands for Employee Share Option Plan. ESOP, the Employee Share Option Plan. You give uh, the employees uh, an option to buy shares, and they will then have the incentive to work hard and to ensure profitability, and they can then buy shares at a cheaper price. So Employee Share Option. This Employee Share Option is also... Uh, actually happening and being conducted here in Pakistan by a few organizations and in some cases it has been very successful. So you make the employees a part of the uh, ownership then their motivation is altogether different. Then they are far more motivated towards profitability and they can see the result of their hard work and the result of their efforts uh, in their um, share prices and their dividends and so forth. So this is a very successful way of uh, motivating the employees to work hard and work well, to incorporate them in the share option plan and they are given options to buy shares. And the other aspect was the training aspect, the crew training. Some people think that training is something which has not been given the same kind of focus and importance as it should. If the organization is going to base itself on learning and growing and expanding, it has to have a regularly uh, highly trained and motivated staff. And therefore, there should be some regular plans of uh, training of staff within their operations, within the areas uh, where they are working to ensure that they have um, good training and they are able to uh, perform and meet the objectives of the organizations. We are now going to look at the balance scorecard as a strategic management system. The scorecard is being used to accomplish the following critical management processes. Clarifying and translating vision and strategy into strategic objectives and identifying the critical drivers of the strategic objectives. Now we're going to look at the balance scorecard and how it helps us in our strategic management. So how does it help in the strategic management system? Strategic management, longer term management, um, setting of vision and mission and objectives and those things. First of all, what Balance Scorecard does? It is going to help in clarifying and translating the vision of the organization into very clear objectives. So, this is one tool or mechanism where you are going to write down exactly what your strategic objectives are in detail. And secondly, it is going to identify the critical drivers of those objectives. So, in trying to manage the organization and as a management system, Balance Scorecard is a formal way in which the organization is going to write down the objectives for the various strategic positions that they are taking and identify at the same time with the objectives the drivers of those objectives. Drivers means what is going to make it happen? What is going to achieve the result? So the objectives are going to be set if the customer objective, as we saw in the last example, was to have greater customers. What is going to drive that? And they said two things. One, the price. And secondly, the on-time arrival. These are the two things that are going to uh, drive the strategic objectives. In other words, they are going to help us achieve the objective. So here, this is how 
the balance scorecard is acting as a management system. We are able to, on, on paper, identify the objectives and we are able to set down the priorities and set down the factors with which our objectives are going to be met. That's therefore uh, helping us in managing and it therefore becomes a part of the management system. Communicating and linking strategic objectives and measures. Establish local objectives that support global strategy. Once the objectives have been written down, then it's much easier to communicate them. And then they can be passed on to the different levels of management. So there will be some clarity and then those will be spelled out in a written form and they can then be passed to the different levels. So you are communicating, first of all, your strategy and secondly, your objectives and how you are going to meet them, identifying the critical aspects. So this is helping now you to communicate your strategy and to link it means that they are able to see now that what is the linkage between the different objectives and the different strategies. In other words, in this example that we saw, the linkage was that if you are going to have uh, customers uh, increase in numbers, greater seed revenue, then you need to, in your operations, you need to excel and you need to arrive on time and you need to also offer a lower price. So this is the connection between the various perspectives. And so strategy is um, linked together and communicated to various parts of the organization. Plan, set targets, and align initiatives. Include and monitor the long-term targets. This balance scorecard therefore provides you a bit of a plan now for a longer period of time. And where you are setting the objectives, you're also setting the ways that you are going to measure them. How generally do you measure? In a very simple way, if you want to measure, for example, the weight, you will use a balance that has different weights and a product on one side and weight on the other side, and you can measure the weight. So the balance is going to be a measure of the weight. If you want to measure height, then the tape, the inch tape, that is going to measure the distance and height. So these are the various different measures. So you are using measures uh, for objectives. So you are setting measures for the objectives in your balance scorecard. This is how it is helping you in overall uh, management, strategic management of the organization. So the plan is going to be for extended period. It can extend uh, from three to five years. And therefore, there is a wider outlook on the organization by most people. Even, especially, the management, they will have some ideas in their, in their own minds of how the organization should progress and where it should be at different points in time. This is the management aspect of uh, the balance scorecard. Enhance feedback and learning strategy. Implementation can be monitored and adjusted. Now, because you have different objectives that are set and you have different measurements, you can get feedback. Feedback is a way to provide information on what has happened. So the objectives were set, the measurements were set, and the initiatives were set. How to give an example of initiative? What are the different initiatives? One very simple example of initiative is that in the case of a farmer, he takes initiative, he plows his land with tractors, and he do, does it several times to loosen the soil and the earth, and he's uh, making efforts, and he's spending money, and he's plowing his land. The next thing he does, after the land has been readied, and it has been plowed, is that he's going to sow seeds. These are all initiatives that he's taking. He's now going to sow the seeds into the land, and he, that is going to take effort. Either it is mechanized or it is manual. So this is an initiative on the part of the farmer to till the land, to sow the seeds, 
to add the fertilizer, to ensure the water is, uh, uh, is brought in on time. And these are all the efforts and initiatives that he takes. In the end, what he sees as a result is the crop rising and standing up. And that's what he sees and admires. And that's what makes him uh, delighted. And it brings in, of course, revenue uh, and earnings for him. So this is uh, the initiative aspect that uh, we can say that's how we mean that the organization in each aspect needs to take initiative. That initiative should be stated on the balance scorecard. What initiative are you going to take to meet the objectives that you have set? For the farmer, he has set the objectives that if he has a good crop, he can sell and generate revenue. So initiatives for him, plowing the land, working hard on the land, bringing in the seed as good quality as he can, puts in the fertilizer, looks at the timing, looks at the watering. This is the uh, initiative of the farmer. In the case of the airline, they have to take initiatives. Uh, they said that we are going to bring in um, the customer loyalty programs. We are going to bring in the employee share option schemes. These are all the initiatives taken by the organizations. So the initiatives that are taken are recorded using the balance scorecard, are recorded in front of the objectives, and therefore uh, the management then is much more organized. The objectives are stated, they can be communicated, uh, all their different measures are stated, the targets are set, and the initiatives are indicated. Benefits. Let's look at the benefits then of the balance scorecard. First of all, a single report shows four perspectives on the company performance. What are the different aspects and benefits of using the balance scorecard? Let's just list them down. And we said, first of all, you have one report that is giving you four perspectives and it is giving you the performance and the objectives and the targets on all four perspectives. So a concise and uh, summarized uh, form of providing management information. That's the first benefit. Developing major goals for four perspectives and translating these into specific performance. The scorecard is then asking you to develop the goals, major objectives. The major objectives that are going to be set, this setting of the goals is part of the balance scorecard exercise. And then setting the performance criteria, setting the targets, setting how you're going to measure the targets. Setting them down and having them in front of you, that's provided by the balance scorecard. It helps managers to see whether improvements in one area may have been at the expense of another. So when these objectives have been set, they have been translated into specific performance, exactly what is required to be done. And then the performance can be measured in an overall manner. So you can identify whether there is an overall increase in growth or whether there was increase here and decrease here. So that offsetting uh, profitability or increase uh, or, or improvements, that is not adding value to the whole organization. So when you have all the four perspectives in front of you, you can see that you have not increased profitability at the expense of reducing customer satisfaction because you're looking at, looking at them together. Whether your customers have also uh, satisfaction has also improved, whether your profitability has also increased. So the balance scorecard is going to give you a wider perspective and it will tell you whether or not all aspects have increased and grown or whether one is at the expense of the other. So if your processes have deteriorated but your uh, profitability has temporarily improved, then this is not such a good situation to be in because subsequently your process deterioration is going to result in some kind of perhaps losses or loss of revenue. And so this profitability won't be sustained. So providing the perspective and the performance on all four perspectives, this is the advantage of the balance scorecard. The approach improves communication within the organization and promotes active formulation and implementation of 
organizational strategy. This is what we have been saying, that this kind of approach is going to improve the communication within the organization. It is going to improve uh, understanding of the objectives. First of all, it is going to demand that they be, uh, be formalized, that they should be formulated and documented, and then they should be communicated. So the communication in the organization and the understanding and all that is going to improve when you have uh, followed the balance scorecard. Let's look at the limitations. What are the limitations of balance scorecards? Criticism mostly questions the assumption of cause and effect relationship on the grounds that they are too ambiguous and lack empirical support. All good things must come to an end, as they say. There is always uh, another side of each story. So where you have the advantages and benefits from the balanced scorecard, what are the limitations or the possible uh, fallouts or drawbacks? Mostly, the criticism of balanced scorecard has been on their emphasis on cause and effect relationship. What is the cause and effect relationship? If you do this, this will happen. If you do this, this will happen. If you are going to train your staff, then the flights will go on time. So people generally say that this doesn't necessarily happen all the time. They say that this cause and effect relationship is too ambiguous to be related to each other. In other words, they are saying that when you have set yourself different perspectives and objectives, and you say, as in the case was the case in the airline, that if you are going to have the lower price, and if you are going to arrive on time, then you will have more customers uh, and fewer planes. This is a cause and effect relationship. And people question this relationship that this is not necessarily the case. It is not necessarily that it will happen. Of course, uh, that may be true. It, uh, there is perhaps no guarantees attached to this. So this criticism might be valid. Uh, this impact of cause and effect, this is something uh, which is nearly like an assumption. We have to assume that if we are going to create this cause, and this will be the effect. So that is one limitation. Others relate to a mission of employee and environment perspective. The response is that there is nothing to prevent additional perspectives. However, too many perspectives should be avoided as a major benefit of the balance scorecard is its conciseness and clarity of presentation. The other limitation of balance scorecard has been pointed out as there is an absence of an employee and the environment perspective. Two perspectives they say are missing. One, the employee perspective. And secondly, the environment perspective. Both these two things, incidentally, have been given much importance and much uh, attention lately, even with regard to financial reporting and organizations are now uh, required to report on what measure they have taken on what effect they are having on the environment. So this is a, a new trend and a new fad, not so new, but nevertheless a, a recent focus that there should be, even in your financial reporting, there should be the aspect of environment should be covered. And of course, the aspect of employee is regarded as very important. Employees are also stakeholders, and whatever perspective they will take and whatever uh, impact they are having, that should be given, uh, in their view, a greater uh, um, notice, their objectives should be set, and their performance measurement criteria should be set. Environment is something that is a cause of concern because of the factories uh, giving out undesirable effluent, effluent fluids there. For example, their uh, water and other chemicals that they have to discharge and dispose into either the surrounding areas 
or into the rivers or sometimes even the seas. This is going to, of course, have a negative impact and a negative um, effect on uh, the other areas, for example, the neighboring land or the neighboring sea and rivers. So environment perspective is important and organizations are being asked to highlight how they prevent damage to the environment because of their own chemical and other disposals. These are two uh, important aspects and the answer usually that is given is that there is nothing to prevent additional perspectives being shown on the balance scorecard. That means, if you wish, you can add uh, more, if you wish, you can add more perspectives. And you can set the objectives for each perspective. You can set the measurement criteria, targets, initiative, all that. The four perspectives have been shown and they have been given. But the other perspectives can be added and there is nothing to prevent you from adding perspectives. But that is going to lose uh, the conciseness, which is the advantage that it is a concise, small report, gives you on one report all information. If you have too many perspectives, that uh, conciseness advantage might be lost. That's all for this uh, session. Thank you for listening.